G'day Kinoa members, uh, we're back with a brief webinar today. Uh, before we kick things off, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which I'm coming to you from. Uh, I'd like to also acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which each and every one of us are tuning in from and pay respects to elders, past, present and emerging. Uh, I'd like to also extend those respects to Indigenous people who are joining us uh, for this webinar. Uh, for today, we have Lockie Lamont, uh, who is the Senior Manager at Stakeholder Relations at the Department of Premier and Cabinet, uh, joining us to give a short little education piece on how to use the Victorian Government QR service. Uh, Lockie will provide us with some information on what the QR service actually is, uh, how it works um, and how you can use it for your business. Uh, I'll keep it short and sweet, so um, I hope you all enjoy uh, this webinar, find it valuable for your business and if you need any further assistance, as always, please reach out to the team here at Kinaway. I'd like to welcome, welcome Lockie to today's webinar. Thanks very much, James, and I join with you in acknowledging the traditional owners, the land that we're all gathering on today and pay my respects to the traditional owners. Um, past, present and uh, future leaders as well. Um, so thanks very much for having me along today to talk about the Victorian Government yeah. QR code service. Uh, there's, there's two things I'd like to talk about um, with regards to QR codes and, and check-ins around, around the state and that, that type of thing. So we've been working on two streams of work um, within DPC um, with regards to QR codes. The first stream has been the development of what we call an API. So for the non-techie amongst us, that is a, an automated programming interface, which is essentially um, a piece of software that is developed to help two independent pieces of software talk to each other. So we're working with um, QR code providers that are already being used by cafes and pubs and restaurants and businesses already around the state uh, to help them digitally link in with DHS contact tracing platforms. Uh, so that, that piece of work is, is underway and, and making good progress. The second piece of work, which we're really excited about um, to, be, to be talking about today with you all, um, has been out in the market for about a week now. So it's the Victorian Government QR code service, and that is um, the government's free, um, free to use QR code service for any businesses or venues that want to register for their own QR code um, for record keeping purposes. So I'm going to share my screen with you to take you through uh, what registration looks like. Um, we'll do a bit of a dummy uh, process, and then also I'd like to show you what it looks like from a customer or visitor perspective. So I'll just share my screen here. Beautiful. So up on screen now is uh, coronavirus.vic.gov.au forward slash QR code. Now this page has all of the information that you need to um, know about the service, um, how to register your business, um, how to receive your, what happens when you receive your QR code, and also um, some advice on encouraging visitors to check in at your premises. Um, so that's, that's a really good place to start. So coronavirus.vic.gov.au forward slash QR code. On that website is a link which will take you through to the registration uh, portal. So it will, if you're a first time user, it will ask you to create to create an account using your username and, and um, ask you to set up a password. It's a really simple process. So let's just imagine I've already done that here. And the first page I'm presented with is um, asking me about my business or venue name. So um, let's say that I have a, uh, a um, a strawberry farm. I was talking to the agricultural sector about this um, last week. So let's say um, it's, the name of my business is Lockie's Strawberry Farm. Um, I, don't, I forgot my ABM, but it's not really important. And we'll say that I'm part of the agriculture sector. Um, you might wonder why I'm using the strawberry farm as an example. Um, the reason being that lots of strawberry farms around the state actually have a, a service where members of the public can pay a few bucks to uh, go and pick their own punnet of strawberries or berries. So that's a, that's just one example of where you might like to record keep who's walked through the front door just in the, in the event that a positive case um, of coronavirus is identified. So we'll click next. It auto populates the location name with my business name. So I wanna just go one step further with um, the definition here. And we'll say that it is the, it's already predicted what I'm about to put in, but the punnet picking hut. So this is where mem members of the public can come and pay their money and, and get a punnet to go out and, and pick their strawberries. Um, and you can type in the address here. And we'll say, let's say that we are out in Toralgo. Um, 
we'll just put in some other part number there for the sake of an easy example. Uh, and because I'm I'm the sole operator of this strawberry farm, I, I do all the work. Um, so I'll say that I'm the best person to be contacted by DHS if there's a need for them to reach out to me. Um, but if not, if you have, for example, a, a site manager or if you have a chain of cafes, for example, it might be best that you have the manager of each cafe as your registered contact person. But let's just keep this simple and say that that's just me. If you had multiple areas, then you could say, for example, using a cafe again, you could say that you had indoor seating and outdoor seating. What the system will do if you identify those different areas is actually generate a unique QR code for each area for you to put up in those areas just to help you further hone and refine your, your contact tracing scenario, um, bearing in mind that lots of, lots of businesses have very unique floor plans and entry and exit points and, and whatnot. Uh, but for today, we'll just use one location, one business, and I've registered. It's that simple. So the uh, the email that I have used to register for my account here, that will be sent an email with a, bit, uh, with a quick guide on next steps and also attached to that email will be my QR code poster. But because we're in the portal here, I can just go straight up here um, to the top menu bar and where it says view my registered locations. And you can see it's got my location here. Click in there. And it's already generated the QR code poster here. So if I click on this link, it will open my new poster that I can display. And it's that simple. I'll leave that QR code uh, up on screen for, let's say, uh, 15 to 20 seconds. So those of you who are savvy enough with your mobile phones might like to open up your camera app and try and check in uh, using, using this QR code to my strawberry farm. Uh, but so the, uh, it's here that I might say that um, the whole ecosystem is powered by Service Victoria, which is the Victorian government's entity that was created to help Victorians transact with government. So, for example, they, they manage all the fishing licences. If you need to go out and buy a fishing licence, it's done through the Service Victoria app already. Um, so it's, uh, it, it, this is just an added functionality that we've added to Service Victoria. Um, so that's our poster. You put it up at the front door, you put it up um, or where, wherever you wanted people to check in. Um, I'll, I'll flip screens here and show you what it looks like um, from a customer perspective. So for those of you who weren't able to scan up on screen now, I'll, uh, I'll show you what it looks like using your phone. So let's pretend we're looking at a mobile phone now and you've opened up your camera app you're in a cafe or my strawberry farm and your camera app automatically picks up the QR code. So this is a new feature of iOS or Android software. It's about six months old, so most people have it on their phones already, where certain QR codes actually automatically tell the phone what it wants to do. And in this case, it's telling the phone that it wants the phone to ask you to check in. So you can, so it comes up with this pop-up and you click open. And it automatically opens up a, a page of the Service Victoria app, which it's automatically downloaded in the background to do this specific task. Um, and the only two bits of information you would, a customer needs to enter are their first name and their phone number. Check into the location. And of course, the app remembers the date and time automatically of the check-in. And it's that simple, you've checked in. So for those users who um, may not have uh, may not have the up-to-date iOS software or whatnot, the details on the poster um, tell you what to do. You can download the Service Victoria app from the App Store and check in that way. The reason we use an app to, to do the check-in uh, process is, uh, is because it's more secure than having a website. Um, so if um, a malicious party, for example, can print and display their own Q QR codes, sending you to a random website, asking you for something potentially like a credit card number. Um, and so just obviously we don't want to do that and our, we have an interest in making sure it's as secure as what it can possibly be. So making sure that um, check-ins with their Victorian government platform happen through the Service Victoria app and that the pop-up that appears um, just helps uh, get rid of that risk because only QR codes that are generated by our service 
will be recognized by the app. So it just takes away that um, takes away that that risk. It's important to note here that um, all information is stored on Service Victoria servers. So government servers um, for no more than 28 days unless it is required by DHS only for contact tracing purposes, that, that's enshrined in law. Um, in, and it is stored separately to all other sets of government data um, on the same calibre of, of security behind it as what you would have with cabinet and confidence documents. So we're really confident of the security and the privacy restrictions that we've built at, at the heart of, of this application. So um, I might leave it there and throw back to, to James, but I'll just uh, remind you of the URL again, which is coronavirus.vic.gov.au forward slash QR code. And thanks for having me along today, James. Wonderful. Uh, thanks, that Lockie. Some really uh, useful uh, information there for our members as they retu return back to back to normal business operations. So uh, thanks for joining us. Um, anyone that tuned in, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if anyone viewing needs any assistance, uh, please feel free to get in touch with the team here at Kinaway. Uh, thanks again uh, for joining us today, Lockie. Thanks, guys. Bye.